Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and we're going back to black holes. Today we're talking about exploding black holes, but specifically about black holes that are actually exploding right now, this second. There are actually a type of a micro black hole out there in the universe that most likely exists, but we just haven't really found any, that are basically going crazy and exploding and creating a tremendous amount of energy. And today I'm going to explain to you what kind of a primordial micro black hole had to exist for this explosion to occur. So let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. Now in one of the previous videos, I've talked about how a micro black hole eventually explodes and creates a tremendous amount of energy, although not as much as, let's say, a sun does um, in a single second. However, nevertheless, it is a large amount of energy. And um, there's actually most likely quite a lot of these black holes exploding right this second, right now. This is actually based on several theories. But just to kind of give you the summary of all of the theories formed by Stephen Hawking and many other scientists is that uh, we believe that when the uh, Big Bang occurred, literally uh, nanoseconds after the Big Bang, the conditions were um, essentially kind of similar to what a black hole would be. The actual time space itself was extremely dense and so many many micro black holes could have actually been generated along with much more massive black holes like for example Sagittarius A star this huge giant in the middle of our own galaxy. Now, these micro black holes that were generated um, in the first uh, few micro and nanoseconds of the universe most likely um, stayed there for a very long time. And some of them are still probably there. Some of them may have already disappeared. But a very specific type of a black hole of a very specific mass is most likely exploding right now. It's basically disappearing. It's turning into pure energy. Now, I wanted to show you this brilliant website I discovered uh, not so long ago by uh, Jim Wisniewski. I hope I pronounced that name correctly. Um, it's essentially a Hawking radiation calculator, which allows you uh, to calculate the per various parameters for any black hole. And this way you can actually discover what kind of a black hole would you have to have for it to literally explode right now, right this second. So, um, the logic goes as follows. A long time ago, specifically 13.8-ish billion years ago, approximately, uh, the universe began with a very large explosion. This explosion, uh, which technically was not really an explosion but more of an expansion, um, is known as the Big Bang. And during this event, uh, many, many various black holes were generated and uh, some of them were not massive enough to survive for a very long time. Some of them obviously were, like Sagittarius A star, for example, is most likely going to survive for a tremendously long time. Uh, and you can actually calculate that by going in here and typing the mass of the Sagittarius A star, which is about 4.3 million solar masses, and finding out that it would actually live for approximately uh, 1.6 times 10 to the power of 87 years, which is a ridiculously long time. It's not even a number that I would know how to pronounce because it's a very, very large number. However, um, a black hole of only one mass, uh, one solar mass that is, would only live for about, well, when I say only, it's still a long time, uh, two times 10 to the power of 67 years. As we keep going lower and lower, like for example, an earth mass black hole, um, the actual length of a black hole, the length of life that is, uh, would start decreasing quite dramatically. So now we're at 5 times 10 to the power of 50, and eventually we would reach um, actual lifetime that's now measurable. And let's go into kilograms and take a look at some of the more or less comprehensible objects, like for example, the famous uh, Pyramid of Giza from Egypt. Its mass, if you were to take a look at it in kilograms here, is about 6.5 billion kilograms. Now imagine I took this pyramid and I started condensing it to the point where it actually does become a tiny micro black hole, which is kind of possible theoretically and maybe even will be possible practically one day, but obviously not today. How much or how long would this uh, black hole live? And to answer this question, we just go in here, enter the value and find out that, well, it would be approximately 731,637 uh, years. That's a lot more understandable and comprehensible than before. In other words, uh, just under 1 million years. 
So this kind of raises the question. So, all right, if a primordial black hole was created during the uh, Big Bang event, so right around uh, here, um, at a certain mass, it would now be reaching its end of life. In other words, um, there's probably a bunch of these micro black holes whose mass is just enough to survive for 13.8 billion years. And that's, of course, theoretical, but quite possible. So how big would this mass be? How big would this black hole have to be in the beginning of the universe for it to essentially just explode literally right now? So we're turning this number into 13.8 billion years, although we can actually just go into giga years here. And we need to make this 13.8. And luckily for us, all of this is done automatically, and we find out that this black hole, let's do it in metric tons, I guess, would have to be, okay, this is not helping, uh, would have to be about uh, 1.7 times 10 to the power of 11 kilograms. All right, so let's create this object in Universe Sandbox, and let's find out how big it actually is in terms of the actual mass. And just for comparison here, I also want to place the actual uh, Great Pyramid of Giza, just so you can see the size as well. So uh, we're going to take Apophis, which is one of the near-Earth asteroids, uh, an asteroid that we thought may collide with Earth one day, but now we know that it's probably not going to do this in the next few thousand years. And we're going to change its mass to that number. So And so essentially, here is that particular object. I, I named it Black Hole because, I mean, this is a micro-black hole that uh, would have to be generated in the beginning of the universe. But what this represents right now is um, essentially the mass required for that primordial black hole to now go and essentially evaporate and disappear completely. Whether these black holes exist out there is obviously not really something we can answer right now, but theoretically they are out there. And theoretically, if a primordial black hole was approximately this big, or in other words, if you were to make it into a rock about 235 meters in radius, um, and then you were to, to condense it into a tiny point and let it live for 13.8 billion years, it would now be actually exploding with the energy of about 100,000 Tsar Bombas. As I mentioned in previous videos, that's actually about the energy that's released in about one second. Although, technically, it's actually much higher. So, this is where the, we hit the gray area. We, we don't really know what happens in those last few moments. It's a lot of energy, though. It's definitely a lot of energy. And so this is the mass required for this particular object, for this black hole, to now explode, literally right now, or within the next few seconds. Uh, now, it will be actually interesting to find out one day if these objects actually do exist, because this is one of the biggest mysteries and possibly one of the biggest solutions to a lot of our problems. If we can find out how micro black holes form, how to maintain them and how to uh, essentially harvest their energy, we would solve a lot and a lot of problems in uh, real life. Uh, the current um, estimates is that we could maybe produce a micro black hole that lasts for a few seconds in the um, CERN uh, particle accelerator in Switzerland that you see on the screen right now. Um, although we still haven't and uh, we don't really know how to then harness this energy in an effective way. Uh, the current uh, understanding is that you could potentially feed uh, more mass to this black hole um, basically by inserting it into its event horizon and you could then maybe just maybe harvest this energy um, and create this ultimate source of power because black holes as they evaporate they essentially convert mass extremely efficiently into energy way more efficiently than a typical nuclear reactor all right so my black hole here has actually disappeared visually it's too small now, and it technically is not a black hole just yet. And there you go, I had to add a lot more zeros to this object to actually turn it into a legitimate micro black hole. Um, if you would like to know the size of this object right now, it uh, can be actually discovered from this website as well, and it does say that the radius of this object, let's do nanometers, um, okay, that's not helping. Let's do something smaller, I guess, uh, Fermi uh, femtometers. A uh, quarter of, of a femtometer, or about 6 times 10 to the power of 18 Planck lengths. This might not mean anything to you until you go to the famous website known as the Scale of the Universe uh, to try to visualize what a Planck length is. Now, um, this particular black hole, even though it looked so big at first, 
would be approximately this big in size. So this is kind of how big this relatively massive black hole would be. It would be super, super tiny. This is the size of a typical subatomic particle, a quark. And it's actually uh, much smaller than a neutron and a proton. So despite its incredible mass, and I don't even know where it is anymore, it's somewhere right there in the middle, uh, this, this, despite its mass uh, being, um, well, really the mass of an asteroid, uh, this black hole is so tiny that it would be impossible to detect. And even if this object now suddenly releases this tremendous amount of energy, we would still have trouble finding it or seeing it from Earth unless it happened relatively close to us. And if it happened relatively close to us, it would be like a very, very large nuclear explosion. Not really an event we would like to experience um, right next to our planet, right? Because it would probably destroy everything. Well, so that's kind of all we really know and understand about micro black holes. So these are the types of black holes that would most likely be uh, exploding and releasing a lot of energy right now. The black holes of approximately this mass in kilograms that you can actually uh, calculate yourself by going to the website that I posted in the uh, description below. Definitely a huge thanks to Jim Wisniewski for creating this beautiful website with um, basically math pre-calculated for us so we lazy people don't have to do it uh, ourselves. On that note, I would like to thank you for watching and uh, subscribe if you still haven't. Share this video with someone who enjoys learning through video games and simulations and wants to know more about space, the universe and basically science. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me a lot. Space out and as always, bye bye. You can literally just copy paste this into Universe Sandbox and here is the object that you get. So this we can rename now. Oh no, oh no, what's happening? Why is my Pyramid of Giza eating Apophis? Whoa, this is kind of not what I expected. Cancel, cancel. Why are you eating it? Whoa, it's great, growing bigger and bigger. I have no idea what I just did. What's happening? What's happening? Did I just create some kind of a crazy event? Crazy unexpected event? Or is my apophis just growing smaller and smaller? Nope, it's the same size as before. Oh my god, I think I know what's happening. I think my... Pyramid of Giza is actually absorbing energy from the explosion and literally growing more and more massive every single second. That's kind of crazy. That's crazy cool.